Hello everyone, I'm Saleha and this is Chai Chat and Community. Tonight we are chatting about jobs and the resources that are available to you. Meet my guests, Tracy Fenton, Stefan Pant, Sylvia Sasso, Sharon Charter. But before I start chatting with him with them tonight, I would like to acknowledge the traditional owners and the custodians of the land on which we are meeting tonight. I pay my respects to their elders, past, present, and emerging. Hello, everyone. How are you? And thank you for joining me. Hello. Hi. Hi. <laughs> um, Hi. Before we start, let's start with introducing yourselves. So, um, Sylvia, shall we start with you? Sure thing. Hello, everyone. Good evening. Thank you so much for having me. My name is Sylvia Sasso. I work for Task Force in Consortium with IMVC, and I am the Jobs Victoria Employment Services Manager. I look forward to sharing a little bit more about what we do in our program and how we can support you to find work and upskill and build your confidence. Thank you. Sharon? Uh, good evening, everyone. Um, so my name is Sharon Chater. And uh, I work for an organization called Job Prospects Parents Next, and I'm the team leader there. So I'm here tonight to tell you a little bit about the program I work for um, and to uh, simplify a lot of things for parents who want to return to the workforce. Thank you, Sharon. Stefan? Yes, good evening. Thank you. Uh, I'm Stefan. Uh, I work for DJPR, Department for Jobs, uh, Precincts and Regions, uh, and uh, am focused on Jobs Victoria. I uh, look forward to telling a little bit about our programs, uh, what they can do uh, for the people hopefully listening and, uh, and watching. Thank you. Thank you. Tracy. Hi everyone, my name's Tracy and I manage the Job Advocates Program for the IELEN and IMVC partnership. And we are connectors of people who don't know where to go, who need support, who have no idea what's out there and how they can access those services. And we make warm referrals and support to those services. Thank you, Tracy. So, uh... Will you tell us something about your project, please? I certainly will. Um, so we operate in the southern region of Melbourne, but job advocates cover all of Victoria. They are pr uh, funded through Jobs Victoria. The idea of uh, the advocates is for people to come into contact with them when they have a whole heap of questions. And it's not just about jobs. It could be that you don't know where or how to upskill where can you get free training? You might have um, someone at home who needs some support so you can put them in contact with us. We work really closely with a lot of community services. So you might be wanting to get some mental health support. You might be wanting to get some housing support. You might want food bank support. We will put you in contact with all those services so that you're ready when you're making the steps and have a positive life experience. It's a really tough area at the moment for people when they're returning to post-COVID normal. Is that what we're calling it now? I don't know what the actual terms are. But now that we're coming out into the free world, um, people are finding that things are much tougher than they thought being locked at home. So, you know, I'm not feeling really confident. Who can help me? If you contact Job Advocates, they will be able to put you in touch with a service that is appropriate for you. So not just generic services, I'll ask you a couple of questions. And it could be that um, we've got, I know we've got mums here today. It could be that you need to have a family friendly service. It could be that you're a male and you only wanna to speak to other males. It could be that you're an older person like myself and you want to go to somewhere that will make sure that you're looked after because they'll take into consideration your life experience. So we provide a very generic based service in supporting the people of Victoria to get the services that they need. Now, our focus is on linking people to supporting them back into work. 
that's an aim, but it's not our only goal. It's really important that people understand that when you're going and looking for a change in a job, so you could already be employed and you hate it. You really don't want to be there, but you're feeling insecure about leaving your job. So we can help you get some career counselling and, you know, make appointments to support that. The other thing that we can do is you're working 10, 15 hours a week and you really do need to work full time. We will help you explore ways to increase your hours of employability. So we're pretty much a one-stop shop to link you to the service that you need. We do not provide the service, but we have a lot of friends and they provide the service. And this service, um, Job Advocates, runs across Victoria. And even though each local service will run a little bit differently, we do all provide the same information. So, Thank you. That's um, okay. Thank you for watching, Gulam. Um, I have a question for you, Tracy. Sure. Thank you for watching, Pooja. Um, she says, um, I'm looking for a job. I have done my master's of community development. And when I started looking for a job, everybody asked for work experience. I wonder how a fresh graduate can have work experience. Okay. This is a question that all of oh, us Oh, it's a this is a really common question. So in my life experience. I've worked in this sort of area a long time employment, getting people back into working towards work. Um, working in, if you want to work in the community development sector, that's actually not too hard to try and get some voluntary work to start off with. That counts as work experience. It's how you sell it and how you sell yourself with that. So you could go and volunteer at a local organisation and then when you're applying for jobs, you say, I'm working at the IE Len at the moment. You don't have to say to people, I'm volunteering at the IE Len. And that will give you current experience. People are always looking for volunteers. If you contact your local job advocates, I don't know where you're based, Pooja, but if you contact your local ones, they will have links to organisations that can help you with that, especially with volunteering, um, community development, is always looking for volunteer people, yep. always. Uh, thank you, Tracy. Pooja, if you're based in Sunshine, um, look up Indian Care. We are always looking for volunteers in the community development area. Yes, Sunshine in Victoria. Yes, Pooja. So, yes, um, just look up Indian Care, indiancare.org.au, and um, speak with any of the girls mm -hmm. or men who pick up the phone and ask about a volunteering position. I think we can fit you in there. Mm -hmm. Thank um, you. Jobs Vic oh, sorry. No, no. Sorry. Jobs Victoria also have a hotline that you yep. can contact and they will put you in contact with your local jobs um, advocate in no matter what region you're in. Yeah. So they'll help you out there. It's just so Pooja says hotline. she's very happy to volunteer. So she's got two Good. contacts right now. Okay. Yeah, um, we've helped someone. We love that. <laughs> um, okay. Uh, Tracy, another question for you. Mm -hmm. I have a two and a half year old and I want to return to the workforce. Well, I'd like to say congratulations on having a two and a half year old and still being quite <laughs> sane after being yes. in lockdown. Um, <laughs> so, well done. Um, so, when Sharon talks to um, gives her part of the spill. Yes. She'll be able to help you yes. with part of that because that's what their role is. Um, and if you're not quite ready for work, job um, the Parents Next program also will support you in, you know, doing some training or um, building some confidence. So there's a whole range of supports out there, and that's a national program. So it doesn't matter where you live. Okay. Sure. Um, yeah. I do have something for you, Tracy. Yeah. Sure. Uh, So Nas says, I'm volunteering in a local council since 2014 and studied certificate for in community development as well, but I'm still not able to get a permanent position in the community sector. Okay, Naz, one of the things I'd be saying to you is it's about how you're making your applications. You need to be looking at a different way to be selling yourself. If you've been um, volunteering for, you know, six 
seven years, you should be able to get a job, especially if you've been working at council. Um, I'm sure that, I don't know where you are, but I'm sure that if you ask the local job advocates, they'll be able to put you in contact with maybe even um, the job um, jobs services. They will be uh, might be able to help you because you've been unemployed for that long. But I would imagine that it's about the way that you're putting your stuff together and selling it because you've got experience. Now you just need to be able to sell it. And that's a lot harder than it's all right for me sitting here going, yes, I can do that, but it is much harder than you think. So there are places that you can practice with. Yes, and uh, Farid has, uh, Naz, if you scroll up, you'll see Farid has put his email address and his contact number. I'm mm -hmm. sure you can contact him and he will help you. Um, okay, there are some questions mm -hmm. coming in from for Sharon. Oh, okay. uh, there is a really <laughs> nice uh, comment for you, Tracy. Okay. Oh, good. Thank you. Thank you, Jitender. Um, Sharon, if you could tell us something about your program, yeah. because there are lots of questions. questions. Sure. So maybe when I've uh, finished telling you about the program, the answer, they'll have the answers. Yes. Um, so um, the Parents Next program is an Australian govern government initiative, um, and it supports parents who've got young children um, who and helps them to prepare to return to, to employment when their ch children are school in school. Yep. So it might be that the child is five years old, just started prep, and you you feel that you're ready to go out there. So this is what we do. So um, we help parents to identify their education and employment goals, and then we guide them through showing them what skills they need um, to achieve those goals. We also um, help parents to decide what they want to do. Sometimes they, they've been, you know, looking after kids for a very long time and they have no idea what they want to do. So we've got a program which we call the Career Development Group, which we do within the Parents Next program. And we explore options that that they could possibly do. We do a careers quiz um, and, then it, and then we explore the pathways and, and ways to gain the skills they need for that particular direction they want to take. So we also link them, link people up with the community. So it might be um, uh, a course, a, a training provider. It might be um, an employer if that's, if they've already got the skills for work and they've worked before. It might just mean that we're just updating their resume and the cover letter and doing a mock interview with them uh, to put them back in touch with employers. We also have um, business developers through our program. So we're constantly having jobs being sent out um, and then we can link them up with the job. So basically preparing them for the job interview, linking them up with the job, and then them supporting them through that that uh, progress. So we've got what we call an employment fund that we can use to, to buy people, um, uh, you know, uniforms, boots, whatever it is that they need to start the job with, um, we're able to assist. But our program also has eligibility criteria which I'll go through in, in a little bit uh, with you. So we can provide parents with guidance and in increasing to, to getting their quali qualifications recognized. Um, things like um, accessing childcare, so they want to do a course. And so we're going to link them up with some childcare so that they have the time to, to go and do the course. Uh, things like, um, uh, as I said, career career direction, I guess. Um, so our, our, our uh, eligibility criteria, criteria for the Parents Next program is you need to have be on a parenting payment through Centrelink and you need to have a child that's at least five years and six months old. So anything below that. We, so there's two types of, of referrals that we get. One is from Centrelink or um, Services Australia, as they're called now. Um, so if you're on a parenting payment and you can go to Centrelink and they and say, I wish to be participate in the Parents Next program, Centrelink will do the eligibility, eligibility criteria check and then refer you to your local provider. Or there is something else where you can volunteer to come into our program, but you again need to meet, uh, meet certain criteria. And that criteria, so that is a voluntary participant and you need to be on a Centrelink payment, 
like a parenting payment and you need to have that child who's that age group. Okay. Once you've uh, given our offices a call and we've got quite a few offices in, in um, Victoria. So we have um, the Craigieburn branch. We've got a Dandenong branch. That's where I'm based at the Dandenong Bear branch. We've got a Frankston branch, a Heidelberg branch, Preston and Sunbury as well. So once you contact me, contact with our offices, we'll give you a call, we'll book an appointment with you, and then we'll go through doing what we call a direct registration for you, okay? And once you actually have that appointment with us, then we have an initial appointment and we do a plan for your future. We set some goals for you um, and then we follow through with the plan in order to assist you get your employment goals in place. We also not only do employment uh, or training, we also do non-vocational barriers. So if there's something else going on, like you mentioned, there might be domestic violence, there might be, you've got a medical problem, um, you might need you might be suffering with a little bit of depression. You need some help there with a counsellor or a, psych a psychologist. We have a psychologist attached to our organisation and we also have a counsellor attached to our organisation so we can assist with addressing these non-vocational barriers that might be holding you back um, from gaining employment. So we look, and we look to tailoring a service to suit you and where you want to go for the future. Um, other than that, um, just having a mental block so, here for a minute. Sorry. Karen, um, so women who have three-year-old children or, you know, two-and-a-half-year-old, yes. are they eligible? Yes, they are. So you, okay. your child yeah. um, needs to be at least nine months old, okay, okay. Yep. and under five-and-a-half years old. Okay, so, so there is yeah. there is somebody who just asked a question. Yes, two and a uh, half Mina years says, old. I have a three-year-old and I'm a student here, so didn't get any subsidy. I don't know what that means. Oh, subsidy. Okay. okay. Subsidy, she yes. Get so, a I subsidy. Think, uh, so to, to be in our program, you need to be on some kind of a Centrelink payment, so a parenting payment yep. to be eligible for the program. Uh, Can I just um, jump in there? Um, so sure. if you're not receiving benefits... There are a number of Learn Locals. They're all over Victoria. Um, many of them have programs that are free or extremely low cost for people to support you getting in back into work. And a number of those um, sites, so they're all over, have childcare. So while you're in your class learning how to write resumes or, you know, get some confidence building or learning how to use a new computer program or whatever it is that you're doing, your child can be in free childcare at the same centre. Well, uh, Correct. Is there a website where people can go to? I'll quickly type that in in the comments. So you need to look up the Learn Locals. Learn so Locals. It's learn, they're yeah. two different words. Um, and they're all over Victoria as well. They're, they're funded through the state government as well. Yes. And each Learn local, local operates on a different system. So you can't say it's a generic everybody, one size fits all. Yep. So an example would be in the um, what areas that aren't, we're in. So we have one in Paran. So they um, have childcare and they run some courses about building people's confidence and just the basics in returning to work. And then there's one down at um, Glen Ira. Now, they have childcare only on certain days and they do a whole range of more vocational-based courses. So it really depends on what you need and where you live. But they yeah. are all over Victoria Learn Locals. Yeah. Okay. So even um, in, in, in the southeast. Sorry. sorry. Sorry, Selena. I would like, also would like to add to that uh, there's another program uh, through Jobs Victoria. That's the Jobs Victoria Career Counseling, uh, which is everyone is eligible. The only only cri criteria is that you live in Victoria. Uh, you get uh, six 45-minute sessions. They do diagnostic testing with you, but they will help you with a resume as well, and they will refer you and sort of point you into the right direction to get these support services. So it's a little bit different than the, the the job placement services it's a little bit uh it's it's definitely different than the job advocate services it's there six sessions uh 
the only eligibility criteria is that you live in Victoria and it's a fantastic service. And it doesn't matter if you're working or if you're not working or what your visa status is, it's for, it's for everyone. So if you're not sure about what's out there, uh, Job Advocate is fantastic when it comes to uh, referring to employment programs and other community services like Tracy explained. Uh, but the career counseling is a, is, a, is, a, is a fantastic service as well. It's been up and running since late August, early September, and the feedback we're getting is, uh, is fantastic. Really professionals, professional people working there are delivering a great service. Uh, Mina, I hope that answers your question. There was uh, Sunita. I hope that answers your question. I had another question. I'm just going to look at that um, before I go to Sylvia. Just give me a minute, please. Uh, okay. Somebody wants to know about cover letter is very important. Sometimes it is very hard to write <laughs> selection criteria. <laughs> We know that. We just talked about We were talking about that before we started. So um, who's going to there tackle that one? Uh, the career counselling um, through CAEV, they will also help you with that. So they are probably the best to start with that. Career counselling. Because counsel. they offer that in your, you know, part of your package. They will help you develop those and develop the skills to write other ones. Sure. Thank you. Nas, career counselling, that's where you need to go. All you have to do is live in Victoria. Yep. Um, Sylvia, can you tell us something about your programme? Sure. And I actually have been taking a couple of notes down because I think that we can help some of the, um, the inquiries that have come through. So I'll talk about those as we go through um, our programme. So we have a program that is supported by Jobs Victoria. It is an initiative to help Victorians get back into work. And it is um, you know, a wonderful initiative that has been set up in response to the COVID-19 pandemic. So a record amount of money, over 600 and almost $620 million uh, have been set aside over the next few years to provide Victorian job seekers with opportunities to get back into employment, to connect you with employers, and also to support employers that have really, you know, suffered a lot through the COVID um, pandemic. So I'm from Task Force. I do work in a consortium. So our two organisations that run this program are um, task Force, Community Agency, and also IMVC. So that's the Inner Melbourne Vet Cluster, which are based in South Melbourne. And we cover two particular regions of Mel Melbourne. One is the Inner Melbourne area, and that is the City of Port Phillip, City of Melbourne, and City of Yarra. So all the suburbs within those regions. And the whole southeast region, including the Mornington Peninsula. So what are the program objectives for us? So firstly, this is a completely voluntary program. If you were 15 years of age, you are a Victorian resident, you have been looking for work for six months or more, you would be eligible to enter the program. There's probably a little bit more to that eligibility and I'll cover that off um, a little later. But broadly speaking, you know, it's open to a lot of people. Um, you don't have to be on Centrelink payments. So this is a great opportunity for those of you um, on this call tonight who may be looking for a service but, you know, don't have a payments and haven't been eligible to go to like a job active or a disability employment services provider to get access to, you know, support in employment, in training and in overcoming any challenges that you're having to getting back into work. So the program objectives are to increase employment for Victorians who are long-term unemployed, to build the work readiness and resilience of job seekers to, you know, gain and sustain work, to also support those Victorian um, employers to connecting them with people like yourselves who are looking for work. So we have a number of offices throughout the region and you can come to us at, in our offices throughout Melbourne. We can come out to meet with you. We can do those home visits. We can meet you in a public space like a public library or your local council. Um, there's lots of different ways that we can actually service um, you, know, you as a client in our program. 
during the lockdown, we've been doing everything virtually as everybody else also has. So we can have those appointments with you over the phone. We can do them on Zoom or on WhatsApp and really still offer you the same level of support as if we were in a face-to-face -face environment. We're very multicultural in this team. So just to tell you a little bit about myself, I am from El Salvador. I actually came out to Australia as a refugee back in the 80s. So I understand the journey of having moved from the other side of the world, not learning, not you know, knowing English, having parents and family who had very little education and skills. And really, you know, learning to assimilate into, you know, a new a new country with all new experiences. So we've really taken that in mind with the team that we have and all of our, most of our mentors actually are bicultural. So we have nine Jobs Victoria mentors and these mentors specifically work one-on-one -on -one with you to help you on your way to identify the type of work you're looking to do help identify what challenges or issues and barriers you may be having to reach your goal in employment and then putting into place those actions and plans to help you get there, you know, on, on the way. So we represent seven different nationalities. You know, we speak English, Spanish, we speak Hindi, Gujarati, Sindhi, Urdu and Punjabi. I hope I've said all of those correctly. And we also yes. have... Have I? Yes. <laughs> Bengali. So you speak we, Bengali. Okay. I, I don't. Well, your but team. I have your team. Ha who does? So yes, that's my yeah. mother tongue. Wow. There you go. So we really are, yeah, very focused on helping our community because we know that you know so much of our you know Victorian um, community speaks the second language so that was really important to us so overall we speak i think about 14 languages within the team which is really great so and obviously if we don't speak your language or your dialect we have got access to professional interpreters that can really support you um, to communicate with your mentor well so what can you expect if you decide to register with a service like ours the um we have lots of different programs. So through Task Force, we have over 40 different programs that we could connect you into. One of these programs, which I really love and I find so valuable, particularly if you haven't had much work experience. So maybe you've had great skills from overseas, but you're, you're, you're struggling to find. And someone mentioned earlier about you know, um, having lots of work experience, but then can't translate that into a job. We've actually been putting people into jobs that have had that exact scenario. So people that have had wonderful degrees and qualifications from overseas, perhaps only doing work experience here, connecting them up to an employer and are now working. So we've actually placed several people that have never had a job in Australia, just overseas. And what the, re the way that we're doing that is we're really on a big campaign to help to change the mindset of employers, to embrace diversity, to embrace the skill set of people from overseas. You bring such wonderful skills. And just because you haven't had that Australian work experience doesn't mean that you're not worthy of an opportunity. So we really focus on that, on advocating for you and trying to connect you in with an employer that will give you an opportunity. So that's one of the things that I'm most passionate about and it's working really beautifully so far. So we have this work readiness program, which runs for 10 weeks. And as I mentioned, everything is voluntary with this Jobs Victoria initiative. And, but we really recommend that you come. It's once a week, it's a couple of hours and you learn so much about the Australian workforce, the do's and don'ts of an interview. Someone also mentioned about writing those cover letters. We will customise your cover letters. So at your appointment with your mentor, you'll identify the roles that you're interested in applying for and we will work with you to develop an amazing cover letter because it is really important to have a good one. I know that from hiring you know, lots of people in my years of work that a great cover letter really is your first, you know, your first impression. So we will Absolutely. help you with that. Yes. We'll help you to build a great resume. So we have lots of other programs. So it could be that you do require some counselling. Um, there are drug and alcohol programs. We have art programs. You know, 
anything that you can think of, particularly, you know, programs that are specifically for women, specifically for men. And really at the end of the day, even if we weren't to have the program, you know, for you specifically, we have built so many connections and networks throughout the community that we can link you into those services. So really the goal for us is to support you to do whatever it is that you need to get you to become job ready. So your mentor will also help you to apply for those jobs and they will teach you some great techniques and how to tap into, you know, the, uh, the hidden job market, you know, employers that are looking for people but not necessarily advertising. We will also help you to, um, you know, do the job matching. So find your skill set, understand your strengths and make some recommendations for you. And once we support you into a job, we don't forget about you then. We will continue to support you up to 12 months of your working journey. I really feel so strongly that if we can support you to be employed for 12 months, then you're unlikely to need this service again. And, and, I, may, and I mean that with all respect, that you will just then be just an everyday person living your life, working, making your money, living your dreams. And that's what we want for you. So we will give you that support ongoing to make sure that you can you know uh if you if there is any issue in the workplace you can overcome that with our support we also have Sylvia, sorry i have a question for you sure um the question is um which sectors are represented for jobs are cybersecurity, social work public health jobs also listed Yes, yes, and yes. Okay. <laughs> so I am actually going to talk about employment opportunities um, in just a moment, but most definitely. So at the moment, we have over 500 open vacancies and in as many sectors that you can think of. So from your very entry level blue collar jobs up to, you know, your white collar degree qualified, re you know, um, requirement jobs. So We've also got industry engagement brokers who are specialists and their full-time role is to be out there every day, networking with employers and opening up those vacancies and allowing them to, you know, come to our clients for opportunities. So definitely. Thank you. Um, no problem. What about apprenticeships? You cover apprenticeships too, don't you? Yep. Apprenticeships too and traineeships, 100%. We've recently just got um, one of our young clients, an 18-year-old boy, into an apprenticeship um, with a company called Super Gardens and it's a landscaping type apprenticeship and he's just started that a couple of weeks ago. So 100%. Okay. Um, I don't know who wants to take this. Uh, when you're looking, addressing a key selection criteria, because this is the basic problem yep. with, you know, because when you come from different countries, I think the KSC is so typically Australian uh, that people actually don't know how to, how to write yep. it. So what are the three or four top things you would ask someone to look at and answer? From my perspective as a person who does, who hires people and historically have made if people don't respond to the selection criteria when i've requested it they'll never get a look in out the window for them yep. um you need to make sure that you answer it but i don't want a novel for each selection piece one paragraph being very you know succinct and explaining things quite you know shortly because i don't want to read a novel I want to be able to read through it, but I want it to, you to respond to the selection criteria. And so often, I know from my own experience, when I've written, replied and used them, I've probably written four answers, four paragraphs, and then edited, rewritten and edited again till I'm down to one paragraph. I think that it, it's time consuming but it certainly um, is something that I've found beneficial. The other thing that I recommend is that you get somebody else to look over it. I think one of the biggest mistakes that I know when I'm reading them is that people, you can tell that I know for myself when I write, what's in my head is not often what's on the page. Yep. You know, there'll be yep. 
just it doesn't make sense. So get somebody else to read it because then they'll go, actually, I don't know what you're saying here. I think that's those two things from my perspective is, you know, write out a long one and then edit it and then make sure someone else reads it. I think those two things are really good. Thank you, Tracy. From my perspective. Um, Sharon, for parents who have just migrated or international students um, who don't know how to write a key selection criteria and don't have work experience here, Okay, what so you recommend? our program is actually targeted at, at parents who are on a parenting payment. So normally, you know, um, students mightn't be on a, a, yep. a parenting payment, but just in, in the general sense, um, with selection criteria, if you're going to make a claim about something, you need to provide an example of where you've done that. That's really important. Um, so not to become so airy fairy and say, I've done this and done this and done this, and don't actually give an example of where you've done this. So if you're making a claim, you need to be able to give an example of what you've done. That Thank would be you. my tip. Um, and particularly if you're a parent who is returning to the workforce after a long significant break, tell them that. Tell them that, but tell them that you've gained a lot of skills in in all these areas and and you've enhanced you you might have done a course in the meantime so don't forget to mention that because you're actually getting some skills from that course as well yeah okay stefan what would you say like i i would say um uh, i think the advice that has been given has been very good i uh, i'm gonna repeat myself again as in when it comes to the support services because uh because you are not there by yourself. And it is quite difficult uh, doing key selection criteria. Uh, don't, it, it's not easy for anyone. Uh, like I've, I've been in this country myself for 16 years. I've been in the employment services industry for a long time. I've given people a lot of advice. And when I, when I did my last application and I had to do I had to address key selection criteria, I think, oh my God, how do I do this? So it's it just just be aware that this is an issue for everyone. And what Tracy said, what's what's in your head is not always on on the paper. Uh, but again, this is where support services, uh, and especially like if you if for some reason you're not eligible for our Parents Next program, or if you're not eligible for the mentor services program, although they have very wide eligibility criteria go to the career counseling job victoria career counseling they will look at that with you they will give you advice they will run it run it through you run, run through that with you as well and uh those services are so valuable and especially if you are in in high doubt like if you've got someone around you that that sort of understands how that works uh use your network but but those services are there they are professional people and it's sometimes good to have a professional Look at, look at that and give you the advice that you that you need. Thank you. Uh, Sylvia, your program will help uh, mothers uh, learn how to do a key selection criteria? Yes, so we will offer you that support and we actually also recommend the career counselling service. So we can, like if you're a bit unsure as to what you're wanting to do, we will refer you to um, to that service but if you are clear in what you're wanting to do you've got a job that you're interested in then the mentor will actually yeah spend the time with you they'll spend an hour or a couple of hours with you making sure that your application is you know as uh, well constructed as possible thank you awesome. um well i keep i've just got a few more things to run through if that's yes okay. please absolutely yeah. Yes. All right. So I was just up to, I wanted to talk about the flexible jobs pathway funding that we have through Jobs Victoria. So this is funding that is available to every client that is uh, eligible and registered, and it's there to support you to, you know, to reach your goals. So whether it's transporting costs um, like vehicle licenses or public transporting, work-related clothing and equipment, you may you may have gotten yourself a work from home, you know, job and you need a laptop or you need a desk or a chair. You might need tools. Um, you might be actually just um, experiencing hardship. You know, um, we've recently just put one of our clients into emergency accommodation. So 
we have that funding available to support you in what you need, allied health services and anything that's related to upskilling you and adding qualifications and tickets to your resume. We will also support you with that. So a forklift license, or you might need a check, a police check or a working with children's check, you may need a first aid certificate. All this kind of stuff is covered through that flexible jobs pathway funding. Now, in terms of employment, as I mentioned before, we do have um, those industry engagement brokers. Their whole purpose in you know, their roles is to build and develop relationships with employers to open up those vacancies and present them to you, our clients. So we do what we call reverse marketing. So it's not just looking at the jobs that are on Seek or on jobs boards. We will literally contact an employer that you may have identified as a place that you would really like to work. And we will try and open that door for you by selling you. And that's what we mean by reverse marketing. So we really want to get to know you as a person with your skill set and sell you to that employer and try to connect you that way. We found that that is a very successful, very um, you know wonderful way to get you an employment opportunity. And we really focus on connecting you to the right job. So it's not about just, you know, filling a position just with anyone that maybe doesn't have an interest in that industry. We really want to understand what are you interested in doing and finding something that you're going to be, you know, really happy with. And we focus on that sustainability. So as I mentioned before, we will support you for up to 12 months once you've started work. So in terms of our vacancies, as I mentioned, we do genuinely have over 500. I think it might even be closer to 600 now vacancies that are open and available. We have got employers that are screaming for help. They call us every day, please give us some people. We are looking for people. So we have lots of warehousing and pickpacking roles, particularly now coming into Christmas. This is the big boom area. Retail, hospitality is starting to, you know, open up and get back on track. I was at another webinar earlier this morning focusing just on hospitality and um, tourism, which is all just starting to pick up. They are desperate for people. They are open to people who are from diverse cultures. They are open to people who are brand new to the industry. So there is lots of opportunity here to get your foot in the door if that's something that is of interest to you. Um, factory work in general, food processing, and we have a lot of work in that community in uh, community services space. So for, I think it was Naz who mentioned earlier has got, um, I think it was a certificate community for- Community development, yes. Com yes, so we have recently placed a, a young woman, Ethiopian woman, Muslim woman, who had applied for over 100 jobs this year alone, has a diploma in nursing and just couldn't get that job application after application it all comes back down to this thing that we're talking about those resumes and those customized cover letters within two weeks of her joining our program we got her into a job and she's still working and that news was actually picked up by channel 7 news through djpr so through jobs victoria so that was a really proud moment for us and we have lots of other examples like this so it really does you know, help. It's to your benefit to link into whether it's our service or, you know, any of the other services that are here tonight or other services within the community. So any help that you can get, you know, you're going to be so much better off for it. So I really encourage everyone to, you know, to take something up. So we have lots of admin and reception type customer service roles. There are work from home opportunities. And as I mentioned earlier, we also have those more specialized roles in that white collar space, particularly if you have, you know, degrees and things like that, we will help. We've got someone into a role recently as a business analyst. You know, that's not an easy thing to do. So your mentor will really work with you one on one to make that happen for you. In terms of the eligibility now, so as I mentioned briefly before, you need to be 15 years or over. You need to be unemployed for at least the last six months. Um, now, there is a little exemption there. There's a little clause. If, if you are experiencing significant hardship, and by that I mean maybe you have been working and, you have, and maybe you were retrenched, say, three months ago and you are experiencing now you know, significant financial hardship, you might be facing having to move out of your home, 
we can do an assessment where we can deem that you are at risk of becoming long-term unemployment. So, you know, if you were to lose your home, then it's going to be so much harder for you to get a home and get back to work. And then that could lead to long-term unemployment. So we can have a discussion with you one-on-one, -on -one, depending on your circumstances. So just, you know, let us know and we can, um, you know, let you know, you know, where you fit into that criteria, but we could still potentially work with you. Um, if you were working, say, 12 hours or less, you would still be eligible. So A week, you um, mean 12 hours or week, less sorry. a week? Yep. yep. Per week. Or you have intermittent work. So perhaps you are, you know, working this week and then nothing for the next two, three weeks and then you get another few shifts. That would also allow for you to come into our program. You need to be a resident of Victoria, as I mentioned to you. You can be an Australian citizen, a permanent resident, or a temporary resident seeking asylum, um, so humanitarian migrants. Essentially, if you have a visa with working rights, then highly likely there's a couple of exemptions. I won't go through all of that now, but if you're interested, just get in contact with us and then we will you know, assess that eligibility with you. And any New Zealand citizens, of course, that have been living in Australia for the last six months are eligible. Okay. So in... Was Sorry, no, I have a Just question kidding. for you. Mm -hmm. um, do you have any information as social media tiles that we can share? Yes, we do. So we have got, so we have a website and I can, I'll actually Yes, please, type I'll in. just type it in if you tell me, yes. Yes, so if you go to, um, let me just make sure I've got it right. Yep, so taskforce.org.au forward slash education forward slash employment hyphen services hy uh, slash forward slash so Sorry, service, uh, services forward slash okay what about international students so that was one of the questions that's coming i don't want to show that but yes that's okay uh, so international students, unfortunately, are not eligible for our particular program. There may be some other programs within the community that you could um, be linked into. So yeah, there's very few restrictions, but international students is one of them, unfortunately. So that might be where we would come in as advocates we would link you to services that would be able to service the needs of international students. Now, career counsellors, are available to international students so long as the student is living in Victoria. Um, but we also do know of some services that will support students, especially newly arrived students who are looking for part-time work. There's a number of um, areas because I suppose we're in a city, we tend to see a lot of those organisations and opportunities for students. So if you contacted the advocates, then they could put you in contact with the correct service. Okay, thank you. And they will often make the appointment for you. So it's not just saying to you, oh, go and contact um, Stefan, here's his number. Often the um, advocate will ring up Stefan and say, you know, I've got this person, um, they need to have this help, can you support them? We will do the follow up work with that. We're quite short and sharp with the way we work with people. It's not long term, but we will make sure that you get to where you need to go. Okay, thank you, um, Stefan. Sorry, uh, yes, sorry, yes, I just sir. have one. More, I just haven't given them the how to contact us through our um, email. That's my last point. So yes, if please. If you yep. have an inquiry, so you can self-refer to our program. All you need to do is send us your name, the suburb that you live in. And your contact number to jves, so J V E S, at taskforce.org.au. If you send us that email, someone will get in contact with you and run through the eligibility criteria, book you in for an appointment, and start the journey from there. So we really would welcome your inquiries. Even if you're unsure, just have a chat to us and we can go from there. Thank you so much. Not at all. Thank you. This is really, really awesome. So I've put it all in the chat so people watching can pick it up from there. Um, Wonderful. Stefan, how, how do you fit into all this? How do you support all the projects? 
So, so I work for the state government, and our, as, um, as Sylvia said, state government has invested uh, approximately 620 million. It's 619 point something. Uh, but I'm 620, gonna make it, yes. Okay. I'm, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to make it 620 then. Uh, and, and the main programs that we, uh, that, and the top of them we've spoken about is the uh, Jobs Victoria Advocate Service. Uh, so that's the service uh, that, that Tracy runs. Uh, I like to call them the community experts to direct people to the right service, as, as explained. Uh, the Jobs Victoria Mentor Services. That's really that employment services, helping someone to that, to that job. Uh, the great thing about the program I, I do like to highlight because I love the program is um, compared to the federal program, it is a voluntary program. So there's not that much time wasted in the red tape that you might see in uh, in 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 government programs. And uh, the government programs are are really good as well. But there's not like have you applied for these twenty jobs and you have to go to this job and if you don't, your payment gets stopped. It's it, there's a it's a bit more of a of a of a uh, an equal conversation basically like who are you what do you want to do the only thing you need really when you go to to you know other than the eligibility criteria is there needs to be a want you know if you want to work those services are fantastic uh, uh, and and yeah again less less paperwork to sign and uh, uh, and, and, and 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 all that uh, then we've got the jobs Victoria career counseling it's been mentioned a couple of times everyone is eligible uh, and another service that we have is the online hub and I want to mention that as well uh, the sidekicker I, I really uh, encourage people to download the sidekicker app there's a lot of jobs advertised there on there as well especially for international students as well um, is it called sidekicker sidekicker or site s-i-t-e s-i-d-e oh d-e yep yeah yeah sidekicker, Side, yep. sidekicker. Uh, and it has lots of positions advertised on there as well. Uh, uh, lots of times uh, the, the, the application process is a little bit easier. It's just a couple of questions and you just answer them. Uh, and and it, it's, it's not the whole process of applying for jobs. So it's, it's really applying for job made, made easy. Uh, and, and I also encourage everyone to go to jobs, uh, jobs.vic.gov.au. Uh, and that website will show you are all the different advocate services in all the different regions, all the different mentor services in all the different regions with the mentor services. Uh, like Task Force, we have, uh, we have uh, services that are for everyone, but we also have specialist providers. So providers that have a special focus on people with a cult background or, uh, or, or youth. Uh, and there's a couple of other uh, categories there as well. Uh, my job is basically to make to integrate the the different Jobs Victoria services, uh, also connect them with the other services that are already out there. The federal services are uh, that might be there might be council services. There's so many services uh, out there, and we want to connect uh, those services in there, and and also work closely with our Jobs Victoria partners uh, like Tracy, uh, like Sylvia, and sort of get the signals from them, them as well and, and try to shape the service. It's, a, it's, a, it's especially the job advocate services new. The mentor services was there in a, in a, in a smaller version uh, and, and, and uh, the program constantly gets adjusted as well. Uh, so that's my role in the, in, in the, in the, in the, yeah, in the machine basically. Um, my last question tonight is for Tracy. Tracy, um, we talked about, you know, mums going back to work, people uh, who are going to work for the first time, apprenticeship. What about people like me? You know, um, so, I want to do part-time work or I want to do volunteering work. Yep. Would you have something for me? So those of us who are on the other side of 45, Okay, All let's, right. let's just go there. Um, it can be a challenge because you've had often you've had some form of career, and whether it's been in this country or where you've come from, um, you're not sure what you want to do. You don't want to work full time. You only want to work part time. Um, there is some ageism out there, which can be quite a challenge. I think, 
and I, I can't say that it will happen, but I think post-COVID, I think some of that ageism will disappear because you people think so? will just get opportunities. Yeah, I think so. And because, you know, at the moment, we're lucky if we're looking for work because it's a buyer's market. There's a lot of jobs out there and not a lot of people looking at this point in time. I think in the new year, things might change, but I think in the next few, you know, like sort of pre-Christmas, I think there's opportunities. Um, I think if you sell yourself the correct way, when one of the things that I find when people apply for a job and they're mature age people, I don't care where you went to school in 1965. That's, I don't care. That school might not even be there anymore. <laughs> Um, what I do care about is probably your last 10 years. So I think that's important. Um, and I think it's important that people are often scared to say what they want when they apply for a job. Um, so an example would be, I don't want to work full time. I only want to work four days a week. Put it out there. You'll often find if they want you, they will accept that. Because I have to say, as somebody who is an employer, I love part-time workers because I get far more out of them than I do a full-time worker in the hours yep. that they give. I, I know that sounds weird, but it just works like that. Um, so people are quite happy to be more flexible. I think one of the things that have come from COVID is about that flexibility. I think because we've been able to work from home, people realise actually we can be a little bit more flexible in who we employ and how long we employ them for. The flip side of that, though, is for people who want who are working, you know, 15 to 20 hours a week, and they actually want to work full time yeah. and trying to get that. That's That can be quite a tough gig. And you need to just look for other positions because the place that's employing you might not be able to afford to have you full time. They might not want to lose you, but it's also about the dollars. So talk to where you are. Um, if you don't feel confident about that, actually contact the advocates. There's a few services that will help you and support you when you're trying to negotiate in regards to employment service. You know, I know for myself, I got somebody to come in um, and be my representative, for want of a better word, um, when I was doing some stuff with my employer because I knew what I wanted and I really liked my employer, but I didn't know quite how to sell myself and I'm very quick to go, oh, okay, then that's okay. And then I would have walked away disappointed and I knew I needed someone to help me out with that position. So I think that can be good. And, you know, you're allowed to have somebody beside you when you're doing some negotiations. Yeah. So I think that's important. But you need to go in knowing what you want. Is it, don't be wishy-washy going, oh, yeah, two days is okay. Oh, all right, three. Know what you want and try and be really definite about that. Now, it's really easy for me to sit here in my, you know, comfort zone going, this is what you've got to do. It is much harder to do it. It is. So yeah. I understand that and it is a challenge um, because, you know, often facing people and asking for things when you feel that you're in a position of um, less than, than, you know, what you're applying for. When you apply for a job, they want you. If they've got you in for an interview, people don't interview 25 people. They interview three or four. Yep. That's enough. So you're in that top three or four. They'll want you. So you've already got some bargaining power. Practice. And don't practice with your family because they'll either tell you that you're terrible or that you're fantastic. Try and practice with somebody who's outside your family when you're doing the negotiations that you know will be honest with you. That would be my recommendation for um, mature age workers who are looking to do less. But it also applies to parents. I think that's the other part. You know, you know, parents, I want to work, I want to start at um, 9.30 and I want to finish by 3.30. Three. Yep. School pick up, school yeah. drop off, yeah. yes. Very yeah. important, yes. And that can also be hard to negotiate, especially when you haven't been working for a while. 
And I think this, this, there's a lot of wage subsidies the government are offering at the moment for parents. Uh, there is a wage subsidy of $10,000 that the government offer for some parents who are returning to the workforce. Um, so it's about um, selling yourself, the reverse marketing. So yeah. re relying on the experts who know the, the labor market and know where to look um, so that they can reverse market you with yeah. uh, the sub wage subsidy. And, and it really does help parents come back into the workforce. Yep. Thank you, Shal. What about and volunteering? What, volunteering? Um, we're really lucky in Australia. We have a really good volunteer workforce. Um, and a lot of those are those who are retired or at the end of their working careers, but they don't want to stop giving to the community or working. You need when you volunteer. You need to make sure it's something that you want to do. Don't get trapped in the. Oh, I've been caught up now. I'm doing two days a week at, um, you know, the op shop, and I hate retail. You know, don't be caught in those cycles. Yeah. Do what you want, um, and often just start off with a few hours a week to see if you like it. You also need to make sure that when you do volunteering, that you let them know. You know, I'm here. I'm committing to you, and I will do. X amount of hours per week or days, however what you work that out. But I can't work over school holidays because I have the grandchildren. Yes. I I need to have this time off because that's my religious festival and I won't be able to work. Whatever it is. If you put that out, you know, people will be flexible with volunteers. Um, there's a whole heap of volunteer organisations that will place you. Um all around Victoria, so there's a central like hub. So I'm looking for volunteers. I go to that hub and say, I need some volunteers for X. And they have, you know, you can go to them and say, I'm looking to volunteer and they match people together. That works really well. The thing when you're volunteering, depending on where it is, make sure that you've got the right um, paperwork. So you might need to have a working with children's check. You might need to have a police check. Yes. Now with those things, if you're volunteering, they're free. You don't have to go and buy them and pay for them because you're a volunteer, they're free. So, you know, make sure that you check all those things out. What do you require when you volunteer? Okay, thank you. Um, okay. So I wanted to ask before we uh, wind up tonight's uh, program. So all the programs that the four of you talked about, they are open to everybody in Victoria, not just Melbourne? Correct. Correct. Our program statewide. is uh, our, our program is Australia wide. So we've got okay, yep. um, offices in Queensland, Adelaide. Yeah. Right. So um, and if you want to contact parents, um, contact me or any of the other yes, parents please. next providers. I'm going to type it. Yep. Sure. Um. So you can contact me. I'm I'm the team leader at Dandenong for this for the southeast. My number is nine zero two four nine zero eight nine seven five. 8975. Or you could go to the uh, Job Prospects Parent uh, Job Prospects um, Parents Next. Just Google it on, on uh, Google and it'll bring you up to our page. And on our page, it lists all the different offices that, that and their numbers as well. That's, yep. I've put that in the chat so people who are watching have yeah. your number. No okay. Thank you all for coming tonight. This has been really awesome. As you can see, lots of questions, and I'm going to put this on YouTube for you to share and for everyone else who would like to share it further. Thank you very much for everything.